Asylum Mystery Theatre presents... Murder in the Cove. As we begin Act 3, much has happened in our island of Tuluna. Toon Frank has spilled the beans on Cor for taking Corbin Colston to a poker game hours before his death. And after Deputy Makani went to question him about it, Cor pushed Makani in the water and fled on his boat. This is where our story picks up. Right, the sheriff and Makani think I killed Corbin Colston, so I need you to... How's it, Cor? Brother, right, I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm gonna kill you, bro. Makani, Makani, Makani. Wait. Let him speak first, then I'll let you deal with him. Oh, Sheriff. Let me explain why I pushed Makani in the water and ran. I'm listening. So am I. Come on, Sheriff. The optics here are crazy. Rich white guy gets murdered. The first place the people are gonna look is the brown guy. The only reason why you're here is because someone must have told you about last night. Yeah, we got into a big argument, and yeah, I wanted to kick his ass, but I didn't even kill him. First off, not the crap, boy. I'm brown too, King. You think I'm looking at our people first with no evidence? I go where the clues lead me, and right now, they lead me to you. Wait, 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 wait. And what's with the proper English, bro? Bruh, this is serious business. I want everything to be clear and in the open. I can't have any misinterpretations sending me to jail. Just tell me what happened last night, okay? Mr. Colston called me to his room yesterday afternoon wanting to get into something worth being excited for. The only thing I could think of was the poker game that was going on at so-and-so's house. I already know it was at Junior's cave. Oh. Well, Mr. Colston started winning and he went on a roll. He ended up winning 30 grand from that Terrence Littleton guy, you know, the guy at the resort. Things got heated because Mr. Colston wouldn't give him a chance to win his money back. And why did we hear you and him got into it after you left? Oh, uh, that. Yeah, I mean, we had words. I wanted to kick his ass, but, you know, that's because he wouldn't give me a finder's fee. But I'm no bumpkin. I know how things work in the mainland. I brought him to the game and he should have given me a 5% V for all his winnings. That's $1,500. It also sounds like 1,500 reasons to want to hurt him and accidentally kill him. No. Mm -hmm. No. You've got it all wrong. And that's only half of the story. Yeah, I was mad and I didn't want to drive him back. I was going to let him walk, but he said that if I calmed... If I calmed down, he would make me an offer better than $1,500. So, what offer? He told me that he knew that I went to college for marketing and that he would get me an internship at Cantwell Advertising. They're the top of the list in five countries. I get a job with them, and I'm set forever. Look, here's the card and the number he gave me. He told me to use his name when I called. You need to go back to the resort until this checks out. But for the record, I never thought you did it. And you should have told me about Junior's poker game. Come on. Sheriff, you know I don't want to snitch. Makani, take care of poor while I go bring in Mr. Littleton for questioning, okay? <laughs> sure thing, Sheriff. Oh, Sheriff, you just going to leave me alone with Makani. You shouldn't have ran. And definitely shouldn't have pushed Makani in the water. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. You remember when I put the fish away for you yesterday? You know, that should have counted for something, right? Right? As Makani teaches Koa a lesson about respecting the law, 
Terrence Littleton arrives at the station with Sheriff Leilani. Look, Sheriff, I, I don't understand why I couldn't answer your questions at the resort. Do I need a lawyer? I don't know. Do you? Well, since I haven't committed any crimes, I guess not. Hmm. You mean besides playing in an illegal poker game? You heard about that, huh? It's a small island, Mr. Littleton. You had to know I would find out. Not really. Nope. See, I was told this thing was pretty secret, even for most locals. Hmm. It probably would have stayed that way if Mr. Colston hadn't been murdered. Oh, okay, all right. See, wait, 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 wait right there. You can't think I had anything to do with that. I mean, sure, it got heated. Sheriff, but... Sheriff, I got word from the coroner. He's discovered blood from someone other than Corbin Colston on a shirt. Ah, uh, well, maybe I'm going to need that lawyer after all. Or you can tell me the truth. <sighs> okay, you know what? You know what? Fine, fine. I ain't kill him, you know? So if it's the truth you want, then it's the truth you'll get. <sighs> All right, now, I got to the poker game around 11.30. Candace had had too much to drink, so I put her to bed and took a taxi to the address Koa gave me. As Terrence sits back in his chair, he begins to tell his story of what happened that night. And his memory flashes back to the night of the poker game. All right, the call is to you, Terrence. You gonna raise or hold? Look here, Corbin Colston. You may be a big man with your fancy hotel villa and private plane, but you're in my world now, son. I don't fold. That would be a mistake. Koa, could you ask Toon Frank for more of that tuba? In fact, here, give him a hundred. I'd like to take some back with me to LA. Sure thing, Mr. Colston. Oui. Uncle, Mr. Colston likes some more tuba. And here's a hundred for a couple bottles so he can take them back with him. He maulik. Eh? Yeah, lighthouse. Uh, I may have lost plenty of money on the table, but the only guy's giving me all of my money back for this tuba. Hey, Knight, did you tell him that this tuba's going to turn into vinegar in a couple of days? Uncle, you like the money or you like me tell him that? Uh, tell him what? Here you go, Mr. Colston. Thank you. The call is to you, Mr. Littleton. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, you, see, you think I'm bluffing. All right, check this out. I'm all in. I'm going big, and I definitely ain't going home. But you will. You will be when I turn these cards over. Oh, the pot is up to 50 grand. This medium kind money pot just got big. Oh, yeah. Call is to you, Corbin. It's Mr. Colston. I don't believe we've become friends, and after I've taken your money, I doubt we'll ever be. King and queen of hearts, royal flush, I win. Wait, 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 hold up. Oh, no, I had pocket aces. That can't be. Yo, yo, yo man, that's 30 grand of my money. Uh, yes, thank you for that. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You have to give me a chance to win my money back. You should have taken my advice, Mr. Littleton. I don't bluff. Winners don't need to. Koa, I'd like to go back to the resort now. Can I interest you in a ride, Mr. Littleton? What, can you kiss my ass, man? You ain't leaving yet. I deserve a chance to win my money back. I suggest you take your hands off me. Hey, Terrence, calm down, huh? No need drama. We can't afford Sheriff Leilani or Deputy McCunny coming down here. Whatever, man. You're a bitch ass, Corbin. A real man would stay and play. A real man? That archaic standard means nothing to me. 50 grand in my pocket is all the man I need to be. Koa, the door, please. Ooh, 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 Lanya boy. You lost bula money. Your wife is gonna be pissed off. Yeah, I think. As Terrence finishes up his story, Sheriff Leilani begins her questioning. If that's all that happened, where did the blood come from? Hmm? When I got back to the resort, I saw Corbin walking from his suite to the beach. I confronted him about my money, and he called me adult. So I told him if he wanted to speak medieval, I would get medieval. So I punched his ass. You know, but I didn't expect him to punch back. You know, I mean, he's old. But anyway, I guess his Tabo class has paid off. 
I realized that assaulting this guy was just going to make things worse, so I left and went to calm down by the dock. That was the last time I saw him, too. I, I swear. I hate to say this, Mr. Littleton, but if it's your blood on the shirt, which you admit to, and you were possibly the last person to see Corbin alive, I'm going to have to hold you in custody for suspicion of murder. Oh, damn. See, I should have kept my mouth shut. Back at the resort, Candace is filled with worry about Terrence being brought in for questioning. Uh, excuse me, Miss Taywanda, can, can you help me, please? I mean, I called the police station, but they won't let me speak to Terrence. What would you like me to do? Talk to your girl. I mean, I see the two of you, you know, the sheriff and you kicking around here and everything. I mean, obviously, you're friends. Can't you pull some strings? I'm afraid that won't work. Sheriff Leilani is not, how do you say, for play play. Oh, She's sure not. But it's been hours. And, you know, and I don't know how things go down in Tallulah Nalu, but when a black man is questioned in the States, he's presumed guilty or he's shot. No need to worry, Mrs. Littleton. Our police department is very professional. We have plenty of shades of colors on this island to think one is better than the other then what could they be asking him for this long? When I left, they said they wanted answers about the poker game. Poker game? What uh, What poker game? Don't hate me, Miss Candace, but your husband asked me to take him to a private game he heard about here on the island. He lost a lot of money to Mr. Colston there. What's a lot of money, Koa? 30 grand. 30 grand? Oh, Mrs. Littleton, please. Keep your voice down. 30 grand? He lost 30 grand to a low-life cheater like that, Mr. Colston? I mean, you can't trust a man like that. Oh, do you know Mr. Colston? Huh, no. No, I didn't say all that, but I mean, you know, rich guys like him don't get rich by being honest. Look, I need to speak to my husband, okay? I'm afraid that's not gonna be possible. Your husband was just arrested on suspicion of murder. Oh, Lord Jesus. Black lives don't matter over here either. God, help me. Hey, hey, she's going faint, Makani. Oh, stay, stay in now. I, I got you. Makani, can you please take Miss Littleton to the station to see her husband? Uh, yeah, yes, Sheriff. Sheriff, can I talk to you for a second? As Miss Tewila and the Sheriff speak, Makani has brought Candace to the station to see her husband in jail. Baby, are you all right? Um, you know, I'm in jail. So what do you think? I know, I know. But they didn't hurt you, right? They didn't do anything to you. Because, you know, I may be small, but I'm a scrapper, okay? And if they lay one hand on you, one finger on you. Ooh. Uh, 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 hello? Sure, Sheriff. I'll, I'll look into it. Look, I, I'm fine, bae, all right? But, but I need you to know, I did not do what they're accusing me of. I know, Terrence. You couldn't hurt a fly. And don't you worry. Since you've been arrested, they're allowing flights again. So I can fly back home and get you the best lawyer money can buy. Well, damn. I mean, you, wait, wait. So you're just going to leave me here? Well, yeah. I mean, but only so I can help you. I'm no good to you sitting here worried. We both know you're innocent. So I mean, I've got to get someone who can prove it. I mean, I, I guess you're right. I am, baby. I am. You just, you sit tight and it's all going to be okay. All right? Um, do you think you can take me back to the hotel? Sure. Just let me grab something off the printer. Uh, Gutierrez, cover for me. I'm heading out. As they head back to the hotel, storm clouds part to reveal a beautiful sunny day. A sense of calm seems to cover Candace's face. Little does she know about the storm that she's about to encounter. Mr. Uh, uh, um, oh hell, Miss T, when is the next flight out to the mainland? Uh, there's one leaving in two hours. Would you like for me to book you on it? Yes. Please, please. That's perfect. It should give me enough time to pack and get through airport security, so. Not so fast, Mrs. Littleton. 
okay, I don't have time for any more questions. I've got to make that next flight out of here, hmm. okay? I'm afraid the only trip you'll be taking is back to the police station. What are you talking about? Is this your shirt? Huh? Is this your shirt? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it looks like something they sell at Macy's or something. It could be anybody. So, if we run it through the lab, we won't find Corbin Colston's blood and your DNA on it? Hmm? This is crazy. You know what? If you have something to say, you need to just say it instead of wasting my time. Look, honey, did you do what I asked? Your thing, Sheriff, and you were right. Thank you. So, it seems as though you lied earlier when you said you didn't know Corbin Colston or that you're from Boston, Candace Miller from Dayton, Ohio. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. We dug into your past, Mrs. Littleton, and it was quite a surprise to find that you did two years in federal prison for embezzlement and intent to commit fraud, all on the testimony of one Corbin Colston. Now, I'll ask you again, but I think we both know the answer. Fine. Hmm? Fine. I did it, okay? I killed Corbin Colston, but I didn't set out to. It just happened. Oh, this sounds like it's gonna be good. <laughs> it's always the pretty ones. Thank you. I wasn't even sure it was Corbin when I first saw him. It had been years. And I'd started a new life and moved on from my past. But when I saw that son of a bitch. As Candace begins her story, we flash back to the night of the murder. So that night, I woke up to use the bathroom. And when I got back to the bed, I noticed Terrence was gone. I didn't think much of it. I just figured he went for a walk because he loves the island air at night. So I, I threw on some clothes and I went out to look for him. And when I came up on the cove... I saw Corbin, he was standing there just laughing like he was mocking me. And it all came back. I thought about all I had lost and had to rebuild because of him and it just, it just hit me, I snapped. Excuse me, this part of the beach is private. You can't be here. You don't even recognize me, do you? Are you my sweet butler? You bastard. You let me take the fall for you when I was just an intern doing what you told me to do. Candace? Oh my God. Oh yeah. You better call for God because you're gonna need him. I did two years in jail and missed my mother's last days and her funeral because of you. I didn't get a chance to even say goodbye. Candace, wait, I'm sorry. I had no idea you would be prosecuted. But when I was, you did nothing to help me. That, uh, I look. I don't know what to say. There's nothing you can't say. Wait, what, what are you doing with that? No, 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 no! I'm not even sure what happened after that. I, but when I came to my senses, I was standing over him with that thing they used to husk coconuts in my hand and blood all over my shirt. So I put the stick back in the sand and, and I ran back to my room. Oh. The murder weapon was hiding in plain sight. Ma Leo, mm. Was going to do another sweep of the beach today because I had my suspicions. <laughs> of course you did, Makani. Could you please take Mrs. Littleton back to the station processor and release her husband? Mahalo. On it! Please, no! Don't do this. I, I didn't mean it. Please. Ooh, well, this is the most action this island has seen in years. And I hope it's many, many more before we see this type again, if ever. As Makani brings Candace to the station, Terrence is there to greet her. Baby, how could you have done this? The man framed me for a crime he committed, and I missed being with my mother before she died. I, mean, I couldn't forgive him for that, Terrence. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's bad enough. But I'm talking about how could you leave me in jail and head back home knowing I didn't do it? Oh, Terrence. Terrence, I was coming back for you. 
I knew you didn't do it, and I knew a good lawyer would get you out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, well, you know what? When uh, well, I'll be back with a lawyer for you. Okay. So don't you worry. Wait. Well, uh, well can't you just call one and, and stay here with me? Nah, nah. You see, I think I need to go back to the mainland to find one. You confess to this, you know. So I'm thinking the search needs to be a little bit more hands-on, just like how you would do it. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Baby, come on. Don't leave me, baby. Baby, come on. Baby, please. Look, you know I love you, Candice. And believe me, this is for the best. I'm going to miss you. As Terrence hits the airport, leaving Candace to wait and see if he'll ever return, the waves of Turunalu return to their tranquil sounds of peace and harmony. Tune in next week for a brand new episode of Island Mystery Theater.